Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Thanks for joining us for another Wednesday night episode of the Pump Your Breaks podcast. We got a great show lined up for you because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in Steeler Nation. Man, that boy Khan just, like the show description said, Khan out there buying the groceries and Tomlin getting ready to cook. Big cook. But, but hey, man, so, you know, it's another Wednesday. I'm here with the with the fellas, the triple OG, Shannon White. What's up, Shannon? I got to say, when the show just started, I just got here. Been trying to, you know, had to reset the router. Been having a little bit of pausing going on the last couple of shows, uh, podcasts I've been doing, and I'm hoping that this will help tonight. Okay, man, you're gonna have to dry snitching yourself, man. We want to tell everybody you the reason we came on. Late. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he dry snitched. That's funny. Yeah, on, his, right. on himself, Big G. <laughs> Straight snitch. <laughs> that's a stand up guy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Facts. Hey, so so Shannon, I, I saw. Your picture on Facebook today, your mom, your mother's lovely. Y'all, y'all went to breakfast this morning, man? No, actually, that picture was about two weeks ago. Um, okay. She had um, – mom is, is 78. She's always uh, got perms and kept her hair dyed. Mm-hmm. And so in the last six months, we told her, you don't need to get perms. Your hair's really pretty. <laughs> let it, you know, let it be natural. Right. And so she had it, it had grown out. So she got a, a cut and style. And she was so happy after she goes, let's go out to Cracker Barrel, get something to eat, and we'll celebrate. So okay. she was so happy. I had to take that picture. I got a couple of pictures. And I decided today, I was going to wait till my Mother's Day. I'm like, hey, there's never, a every day's away. a good day to celebrate our moms. Yeah, you can always celebrate moms. That's right. So, so she, uh, she loves to hear from everybody and and all the kind words people say, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. When when's uh when's your mom's birthday? In January. So she turned seventy eight in January. She just turned seventy eight. Yep. My mom would be seventy eight in October. Yep. Yeah. Big G. What's cracking, man? Man, I'm you what? know I gotta, I gotta be like Big G, my little fella, the oxymoron, because you Big <laughs> G and you the little fella. Yep. Yeah, man, what's happening with you, man? Watching these algorithms. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm over here on them algorithms. Like Omar Khan is out there in free agency, bro. I'm trying to make sure that them rhythms get to jumping early and often, bro. We got 50 in the chat. We got about 22, 23 rhythms with the likes. Yeah, we got, Y'all we, know we, the drill. Y'all know 70. the drill. We got 70 in the chat. It just done went up then. I, you done refreshed. Yeah. I ain't refreshed. I'm on the rhythms. Like, I'm trying to like pay 68. attention. But yeah, no, so everybody in the live chat, my boy Mr. Wood C, what's happening? Yep. Steeler Girl 808, Pittsburgh Tidy. Afton, did I see you posted something in the chat that said you in DC? Yeah, that's what it said. What's, what what's, what's going on with you? You, you out my, my neck of the woods. Yep. What you doing out this way, Afton? She probably what? over there, she probably over there trying to scout out some potential stealers, dog. She she after be looking. I have to be paying attention, man. She's she trying to scout it out. <laughs> yep. She going, I don't know when it is. She going to Maryland's Pro Day. <laughs> Maryland Pro Day. Maryland Pro Day. <laughs> she said her oh, mom's man. is there too, bro. It's she said her mom's there. Too. Yep. Okay. She, she knows if you go to Maryland's Pro Day, you know you're going to see Tomlin. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's Tomlin's spot. <laughs> hey, man, Tate, I, I, man, I, I, can't, I can't tell. Listen. You know what? What me and you talked about backstage, man. I Don't tell, tell him. Just kind of leak it. You know what I mean? Now you yeah. leak something. Hey, man, I know where Omar Khan was this week, for a fact. I know where he was. I know what he was doing, too. I, I can't tell, yeah. but but I know where he was at. I know where he was at, and I know what he was doing. Was he was, well, was he in close proximity to you? Something sort of like that. Something like that. Something sort of like that. I know what he was doing, too. I know what he was doing. He was signing a bunch of free agents. No, yeah, he was doing that. He was doing that, but he, man, like, like, just remember how I told y'all, just stay tuned and all that, all that Justin Fields mess and all people who was talking, you don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, it happened just like I said. I'm telling y'all, I know where Khan was at this week. I got, G, that, that's, I got that's, some inch high on him. I got some inch high on him. Eyes inch, on him. Inch, 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 private eye. 
It's not private eye. Yeah. Been that's, not, you. <laughs> that's not happening, Big G. <laughs> hey man, I don't know what's happening. Big G. Well, you know what? You might be right. I shouldn't even say that about old 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 con artists. I don't know. He, I don't know what's happening, but I know Omar he, Khan is up to something. He, he had to do anything. He might flip Russell Wilson and Justin Fields into Patrick Mahomes. Man, I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm trying to listen. All I know is. I know he was up to something, doing something this week. I can't tell all what I know, but I had eyes on him. That's all I'm telling you. And uh, there's some stuff might be cooking, man. If it it, it go down, Tate, remember I told you first, Tate. Shannon don't even know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I feel I'm hurt now. I'm going to tell you, Shannon. I'm going to tell you. I'm hurt now. I can't say it on air, bro. I'm gonna get. I'm listen. You, you know, I like you can't give up your source. You can't tell everything you know. Uh, okay. I can't tell on air, but I'm just hey, telling Shannon, you, know, Omar cooking. I man. did. I did hear from Big G first, but look, I'm gonna tell you this first, Shannon. It ain't happening. Okay. What he gonna yeah. tell you? It ain't happening. No okay. way. No <laughs> way. Tate, Tate. I, I just if if it happened, what I tell you? Are you gonna pass out on the show? If it happened? Yep. I ain't going to pass out, but I'm going to be really, really happy. I'm going to be doing the the, the zippity doo dance. dance. <laughs> you could at least get the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, I'm going to start crying live on air. <laughs> I'm telling you. A tear that must be, be big. I'm gonna be, man, I'm going to start wiping tears from my yeah, eyes. Shannon, oh. that's why it's not happening. It's too big. I can't wait for the show over with now so he can tell you what he's talking about. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Man, I'm telling you. Now he's I, got he's he's done winning everybody's appetite. That's he all got right. The whole white chat wondering. Oh yeah, that's all right. That's, that's all right. That's, that's wrong, Big G. Hey, but listen, I I did it before. I told them about Justin. They was people nah nah, and I said okay, and then I then I leaked out a little bit more. And I said I and remember I had the episode. I said I oh I wish I could tell, and I couldn't tell. Well, you see what happened. So I know something else that's done happened too. I'm just being real quiet about it. Real quiet. I, I done leaked a little information out. Just stay tuned because caught Omar Khan cooking. Omar you keep Khan. leaking like you're leaking right now. You're going to have to get some depends. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start leaking I'm a lot. You, I'm telling you, I'm a, I, if it go down, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry <laughs> on there. I promise you. I'm going to cry for real. So so if it if it don't happen, then when we come back, you got to tell everybody what, what, we, what you was talking about. Yeah, I'll tell them. I'll tell them after. I'll tell them on the 28th of April. If it don't well, happen, why, I'll tell them on the t- why the twenty eighth of April. Uh, it's, it's something that's happening, man. What happened it's on twenty eighth April? Uh, that's that's when everything is. It's the coast is clear. All is clear on twenty eighth April. After the draft. Mm. Oh, the draft! I want him to say it, Shannon. I knew what he was all, talking about. All clear. All <laughs> the coast is clear. The coast is clear. That's all I'm saying. You know. Okay. But I, well, I'll tell it afterwards. All, all, all I can think of, Big G. Shannon said after the draft, I'm sitting here thinking you say the 28th, and I know you got connections down there in Columbus. I got so, a couple spots. I got a couple spots. I'm, I got eyes. I'm just guessing there's something around around that, but we'll see. Yeah, but we'll hey, see. man, again, shout out to everybody in the live chat. Jeremiah Yoder and Joan joined us. Hey, man, Thomas I'm, Riley then joined us. AFL you can't put 67. The, you can't put hey, Claude so, in the make. You can't look what Claude said. What he look say, what man? he said. Look, oh, look what he. Mm. What Claude say? Man, I'm. I gotta make me a matrix sign, bro. There's what he said. Get Claude out of here. Stop. <laughs> what he say? Stop giving yourself so much credit because you would have given a second, second round pick. <laughs> but most people would have. <laughs> Why you playing, Claude? <laughs> I would. I was. I, I was in on the third at one point, but then the market cooled and. You saw Mac Jones going for six. You saw Ritter getting put out of there. You saw all them quarterbacks getting put out of there, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. Khan just yeah. sat back and waited, baby. Yeah, he sure did. That's, that's what he do. He, he shows patience. Yep. But, so let's talk about what he's been doing the past couple of days, man. They was down to owners meeting. Yep. Down in, in Orlando. Yep. Uh, we heard from Tomlin this week. Mm-hmm. The first Monday, I believe. Yeah, today's just Wednesday. Monday. Yeah. I believe we heard from Khan yesterday, the general manager yesterday. Yep. Um, Tomlin, when asked about, you know, trading 
Kenny Pickett. Yep. He said, you know, they acquired Russell Wilson. Yep. He said once they acquired Russell Wilson that Kenny asked for a change of scenery. Mm -hmm. So then the con man immediately went to, sounds like working the phones. Yep. You know, call Chicago up, call him up, uh, Ryan Poles. Hey, yep. Paul, what's up, man? I got that six for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I feel like then we talked to we talked to Pay on the Chicago Bear podcast about that. They weren't happy about that. Yeah, yeah. He fleeced him, but you know, that's all it's okay. It's that that's a done deal. Oh, yeah, that was fine. I, I, on, on homies. I don't really think it was a fleecing. If you listen to polls, he said that trading fields was like the hardest thing he's ever had to do. Uh -huh. And he really respects him. And he wanted to put him where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And Fields turned down four other options and said he wanted to be a stiller. Yeah, he and did. And Poles made it happen. So I I, I admire that. Um, I, I, I told don't think Big every G the same thing. Yeah. Huh? I told Big G the same thing last week. Yeah, I, I don't think that every transaction, do you got to appease the public or the experts, uh, the talking heads on TV, so they'll give you a good grade. Sometimes you got to do what's right by the player, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what he did. And I admire that actually. And that's mm -hmm. what, and that, and that's what Joey Sports Guy told us last week. He told us that you know, Chicago was just trying to, trying to put a put a put a good face out there for the exactly. players. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Very true. Like, oh, Chicago, you know, might not be a bad place to go. They did right by Justin Fields. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, but they this remember week, if you do them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> This week, con man brought in Quez Watkins from the Philadelphia yep. Eagles. Yep. Love him. Tell me, tell me about him, Big G. Quez Watkins is your is your is your prototypical slot So him and v Vance Jefferson sort of play the same position, but they're different. Quez is faster than Vance, right? And but yeah, substantially faster. But Vance is a little bit tougher than Quez, but both of them are tough. Mm -hmm. But Quez is going to help special teams yep. as well as offensive production. But the deal is this. Quez, in my opinion, is an upgrade from Calvin Austin. He's an upgrade because he's a polished NFL receiver. More his route, yeah. yeah, Oh, yeah. Go look at his route running. Go yep. back and check out your all-22 film and look at what Quez do. In, in the slot, he, sometimes I've seen him move out to the Y, and I was like, whoa, what is he doing at the Y? Hey, he ran crispy routes, comeback routes, cross routes, fades, deep fades, post corners. Hey, man, yeah, I, I like Wes, and I think he's going to be a pro's pro in Pittsburgh, in my opinion. If you take – if they get a top receiver, you know, in this draft, you know – first, second, or even third round, mm -hmm. and you take Pickens and whoever that rookie receiver as your number two, and then you have Jefferson, and then you have Watkins, and then let's say it's – uh because we don't know where – there's going to be something else we're getting ready to talk about. We're mm -hmm. not sure what position, but he's can play multiple positions. But yep. if you look at this depth chart, it's better at wide receiver than last year by a large margin. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. So yeah, Quez, Quez is Quez gonna help out a lot, man. I mean, I like him. Yeah. He's a pros pro. He's definitely gonna be on the 53-man roster when they make the cuts. Tay, don't get fined, bro. Don't get fined. Don't get fined. I seen that. Well, y'all seen, man, I told seen you, the I'm new... not always talking to you. I was talking to my phone to find something out. Okay, my bad. Y'all have <laughs> seen the new kickoff uh rules. Yeah, of course. Okay, now with this new kickoff rules, uh, I don't I didn't watch them last year. The I think it was in the AFL. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times US, uh, USFL. XFL. Yeah, XFL. Now it's the USFL. Yeah. But a lot of times you have to have two returners. Because mm. see, they can kick to either side, and you if you have two returners, you can set up a return better. And so Watkins could have real value there as that second returner. Mm -hmm. No. <clears throat> Definitely. Well, Definitely. that 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 now, so let's get into the, the next the next guy. 
Mm-hmm. And we jumping out of order a little bit because I was going to come to uh, what's the guy name? Roy, the defensive lineman. Yeah, for the Packers, Minnesota. No, no, Dean, D- yeah. Dean Lowry. Dean Lowry. Lowry, yes. Mm-hmm. I hear he's pretty good. He got a lot of starts under his belt. Absolutely. He's he's 6'5", 300 pounds. He's a, he's a run-stopping defensive yeah. end. Yeah. That's exact. And and he can spell Cam Hayward for downs and distance to certain plays in the game. Matter of fact, he can play on either side. He can play, he can play left D tackle. I mean DN, he can play right DN and yeah. be in a three, be in a fives technique or the six technique on either side. And you're not going to run the ball straight at him. He he's going to take two blockers every time. Two, it's going to take two guys to move him out of the way. So definitely, he's homie, a definite fit for the Steelers. The homie S. Dredd said in the live chat that he is solid death guy. That's the Absolutely. key. That's uh-huh. the key to all these guys he signed here in the last little bit. They are quality depth. Yeah. At positions that it's needed. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> And he's going to be on the fifty-three man roster. He's going to do. He's, I'm telling you, he's going to be on the fifty-three man roster when they do the cuts. He's on the team. I think it's going to come down to him or Fioku. Fioku will be out of here. I mean, I, I just think that they're they're both similar. Some bench. Uh, they're both more run stoppers, mm-hmm. and I think that you know there's a chance they'll both make it since Armand Watts is gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Larry can play. Uh, you know, on the outside more, where if mm-hmm. a is a nose tackle. Uh-huh. So, but it still could come down to one of them or the other one not making it. Claus so, said that Claus said that De, 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 uh, Deontay Johnson was better than every receiver we signed. That's see, Claude, That's why you be in the matrix. Keep going, Cam. But, but he, he 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 is. You don't think he is? Listen, it don't, I didn't. It don't. It don't mean he didn't have to go. But yeah. he's better than these guys. The Steelers' plan is to get somebody in the draft mm-hmm. that's going to fill in that number two spot. Well, yeah. the problem with DJ is he's very system dependent. He he doesn't fit the Steelers' system at all, especially Arthur Smith's system. But he never has been a yak yards guy. He falls down before contacts. He runs out of bounds. I mean, he doesn't play like a Steeler wide receiver. I mean, still the wide receivers have always been tough, physical. I mean, Tony Brown to jump over you, crawl under you, climb up you. Whereas DJ goes down before you touched him. So I just never I could stand to watch you play. To me, to me, to me, DJ is the Devin Bush of wide receivers. Mm. I don't disagree. No, he made he made a Pro Bowl and you know, he's better than Van Jefferson, Jefferson, better than Quiz Watkins, and better than he might not be better than Cordero Patterson. But that was Probably with not. Big Ben feeding him the ball, and they didn't have nobody else. They had and to he, throw it to and, him. And he didn't have nobody else. He had nobody feeding the ball when Big Ben left. Well, that's true well, there, but <laughs> but I'm just saying that the reason he caught so many balls and got so many targets is they had nobody else. Listen, I'm, I'm not saying that the guy was terrible. Don't get me wrong. But this is what I'm saying about Deontay Johnson. Shannon, you are absolutely correct by saying that – and now we're going to date ourselves concerning roster – and wide receivers display for Pittsburgh. I'm talking about all the way back to the Jeff Graham days. Let's go. We can even go further back if we need to. Mm-hmm. But there's a certain caliber or hey, certain. Yeah, what's I up? I saw somebody it was because it was on the Steeler page, fan page, yeah. whatever. One of those Steeler groups' birthday. I forgot about it, man. Y'all remember the dude Ouija Thompson? We yes, yes. Oh yeah, I remember Ouija Thompson. Absolutely. Six six, yeah. the Mad Stork. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I had forgot about him. So I said, yeah. I remember old Ouija. Yeah. But but the Steelers, man, has had a certain cut as far as wide receiver. Now I remember a kid that had was super talented that Pittsburgh drafted, and he never panned out because he was a character issue. The kid's name was Lima Sweet out of the University of Texas. Deontay Johnson reminded me a lot of Lima Sweet. It's the way he carried himself. His character, how he whined and cried, he didn't get the ball. They got him up out of there. So I, I'm not dogging Deontay. I'm just saying that it's obvious. I mean, they publicly said that the reason they moved on from him was because his influence on George Pickens. So that's something, something's wrong. If if you're the elder statesman mm-hmm. and they, they want to run you out of town because they don't want you to influence the kid who's got more talent than you. That's that's Lima Swede's type stuff. 
And I mean, we had <clears throat> we had problem receivers. Martavius Bryant was a problem off the field, had personal issues. Santonio Holmes, a problem off the field, had personal issues, but they was cut a certain kind of way. Deontay Johnson hey, was big not G, cut that hey, big way. G, hey, big yeah. G and Shannon. I'm yeah. not disputing any of that. He needed to go. Mm. It was said you got to go on Claude because he said that DJ was better than all the receivers we signed, and he was. George Pickens and Austin was the only receivers we had. We had to sign somebody. I think Facts. they did additions, but they're not a better respect. They're, they're going to draft the receiver because DJ is gone. They didn't get one of these dudes to replace what DJ's production was. I don't I don't doubt that. I agree. Well, with one you one more one more observation. Lima Swede, his hands, he had Ike Taylor hands. Sure did. I mean, that dude couldn't catch a cold. So I mean that <laughs> the DJ at least held on the ball a little bit better the last couple of years. DJ can't run a go route. It. As, as, he never as, did nothing with it when he caught it. Yeah, Dredd DJ can't run a go route. Yeah. As Dresden took it back to Lewis Lips, <clears throat> yeah. Yancey Thigpen, Andre Hastings, Ernie Mills. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, been he a got, ton of great ones. Oh, we cut they all cut the same. Yeah. They all cut the same. DJ all wasn't cut like that. Yeah, he wasn't cut like that. No, he never was from the beginning. He wasn't yeah, cut no, like not. that. I'm not here as, as DJ's defense attorney. I just know he's better than Van Jefferson and Quez Watkins. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, we call it. We, yeah, we, ain't argue, we ain't arguing that. Hey, so real quick, we're going to take a quick break real quick. If you're watching on YouTube, stay with us. If you're listening on one of the audio platforms, we got to hear a few words from our partners, and we'll be right back after this. And we're back on the Pump Your Breaks podcast with the triple OG homie Shannon White and the little fellow, the oxymoron Big G, just here talking Steeler talk. So we basically went over some of Omar Khan's signings for the week, Quez Watkins, Dean Lowry. Oh, we didn't really talk about uh, Cordero Patterson. What or you guys think Kyle about Allen. That? Or who? Kyle Allen. Oh yeah, the backup quarterback. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, go ahead. Well, Shannon, pick one. Who you want to take, Cordell or Kyle? I want to talk about Cordell. Go ahead. And and the reason why is two years ago at our old stomping grounds, I wrote an article about how the Steelers should sign Cordell Patterson. Mm -hmm. And because they needed help at running back, wide receiver, kick return, and I said he was perfect and he's a great human being. Yep. Go go to YouTube and just look him up yep. and see some things that he's done. Just a spur of the moment for fans, uh, quality individual on and off the field, yep. quality player. Uh, he can run the ball, you know, and, and a lot of that outside zone runs gets yep. you a little extra speed in there out yep. of the backfield, can catch the ball, can line up outside uh, and, and play wide receiver. And he's one of the best kick returners in NFL history. So yep. I think that is a quality depth signing on a team that needs some numbers there on the depth chart. He's going to fill a lot of roles. And it was, a, and, you know, he's past his prime, but he could be one of them guys that could have a breakout season towards the end of his career in Pittsburgh. He's going to be on the 53-man roster. Yeah. <clears throat> Shannon, Shannon what, what have you been saying all the time? The Steelers roster is not – it needs a rebuild. Yeah. That's it's what Khan's doing. Level yet. Yeah. yeah, that's what Khan is building us contender level roster right now. Definitely. That's what definitely. he's doing. Mm -hmm. he's, he, he's, he's in every position. In every position, he's getting us quality players and depth. And that's what you're going to need to make a run. You're going to yep. need that in, in the new NFL. You're going to need depth and quality players. And that's exactly what Omar's doing. Exactly what he's doing. And he's hard to tackle. Yes. Patterson is as it runs hard. Now you're going to have Harris, who, if you've seen the video, he's cut weight. He looks real fit. Yep. You're to find him. Find him. Where he, he talked. I was watching the algorithms. <laughs> he's man. still, he's still muted. Where to find sign at, man? Take, oh, there you go. <laughs> I double clicked the mute. But no, I did. I did see the Najee video. He did cut weight. He looked he good. Did. Yeah. Yeah. I and think that's going to be him? a factor. 
You got Harris, you got Warren, and now you're going to have Patterson? Hey, good luck tackling him, especially if you can't hip drop. You're going to need all of them. You're going to you're going to listen, it's a long season, man. It's a long the, season. The, the thing I think is we know we all know coach Mike likes uh positional flexibility, right? Exactly. Yep, absolutely. Chess pieces. So with a lot of Patterson, you probably get the number five receiver and number three running back. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. With Connor Hayward, you get number three tied in and number four running back. Yep. And the number one H back. Exactly. Yeah, if, if they go yeah. with that, yeah, 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 yeah. You're filling multiple positions with two guys. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why depending on what they do in the draft, I'm real, I'm real big on thinking. Pat P gonna come back too. They're talking. They said they might bring him back. Yeah, I don't know because about okay, I'm saying. Well, and look, you got Eric Rowe. He says he only wants to play for Pittsburgh, and he was really effective at the end of last season. He was. He was. And that would be a cheap backup safety. I think they get a nice mix of veterans. Yep. And young young guys, and if Omar hit on this draft class like he did the last one, man. We we now now not now we cooking with him. Yeah. We 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 the fans. Tate, I think we out the quarterback market though. I think we out the, I don't think they draft one. Man, you see you, you see you seen that 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 clip I sent you of Joe Milton pay, or play um pro day. Oh, he's a beast now, but his his Joe Milton has the physical ability or physical tools, but the difference in Joe Milton is is that his combine tape and all that stuff don't match what you see on the field. Maybe it was the style of offense that he ran at Tennessee because the receivers, they ran four wide and the receivers were outside the hash marks every time. So maybe that's why maybe in a pro style offense, he looks different, but as far as actual physical tools, Joe Milton is a monster. That's that. that, that <laughs> and that's all I'm suggesting is a, is a six round pick. If he's there. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you'd be there though. Six, five, two forty five. Four, yeah. four, five, 40. Cut yeah. it out, man. Cut it yeah. out. Yeah, actual physical tools. He's he's probably the biggest, strongest, and probably fastest quarterback in this draft. There's there's no doubt about it. But somebody's like said, gonna somebody's match, gonna you know? somebody's gonna overdraft him and throw a fourth at him. You watch. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you, Shannon. <clears throat> probably. Probably. I agree with you. Yeah. But hey, so there's been a lot of talk on the national on the national media, man. If you watch any of them shows. You know, get up, Stephen Smith. Um, what's the show with Mike Greenberg in the morning? Good morning. Oh, good, um, oh. good morning, football is on NFL channel. It's get yeah. up. It's get up. It's with uh, uh, Greenberg and them. Michael that, Greenberg. That, that is get up. What's the Stephen Smith show? The Stephen A. Smith show. First take. First take. Yeah, get up is yeah. Greenberg. It's uh, yeah. Smith and that other real loud guy. Mad dog or whatever he's name. Yeah, is. that's 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 yeah. that's first no, that's first take. Yeah. Then you got then you got the uh the guys on the Fox Sports channel, the Carton yeah. show. Yeah, you got Undisputed with Skip and Colin Coward, and you know, I kind of flip through these things over the course of a day. I see a little bit of everything, but a lot of them are leading with you know, first first or second block of the show. Yeah, talking about Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Yeah. So it's like so. Coach Tomlin's also said at the owners' meetings he really likes Russ. He, you know, when they when they sat down and had the meeting, had to talk when when the Broncos allowed him to speak to other teams. Yep. And it was just a a connection there. The way they see football the same, right? And we knew that. And uh, he said Russ has been there, done that before. Yep. Pro's pro. Russ is a pro's pro. Ain't no ifs, ands, buts about it. I don't know all my Siri keep coming on. But he said Russ been there, done that before, right? Mm -hmm. He said he's been the face of a franchise. He knows how to he knows how to lead the team. I think that's what our offense was really missing last year. Yep. You know what I mean? It was missing mm -hmm. leadership. I'm not so sure how it went down. I mean, Najee Harris or somebody <laughs> else was a captain the year before. Mitch, 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 Mitch. And then this year, Kenny was a captain by himself, but I don't know how all, how, how all this went down, if that seems very captain-like. I don't know. So what I'm saying is it seems like the offense lacked true leadership. 
Mm -hmm. I think Tom was looking for Russ to bring that part of it. Yep. With the experience and stuff. But he also said, so that's what it is right now in March. Because, you know, you, you need that in the offseason. Somebody to conduct, conduct business, get that, get guys together and all that kind of stuff. But he said when training camp, camp starts, Justin Fields will get an opportunity to compete. Absolutely. Has to. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to play. Well, listen, I, I'm telling you, we already done said it. He's going to play. Mm -hmm. He's going to play. I'm not saying 51% of the downs, but there's going to be packages for him. Russell, he's going to play. He's inside the 30, inside the 40. But I, I've been saying all along, he's slash 2.0. Y'all going to see. Taysom Hill packages and all whatever else is going to be all in. He's too, he, I, he's still, even after all of these signings, he's still the best athlete on the on the roster right now. Big G, he's still the I, best athlete. I, I agree with you as the slash part, but he's not going to be playing running routes. He, that part he's not going to do. You want to bet some corner time on it, Shannon? I, yeah, I, I don't see him running routes. I really don't. You want I think they're going to use him in specific packages and get him yeah. out there, but I don't see him running routes. Oh. Over, under, over, under three passes caught for the season. I'll bet you corner time on it. What you want? I'll say over, under. 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 15 minutes corner time. <laughs> 15 minutes. Now, the, now the, the bet is dead if Russie gets hurt. And he's got to go in full-time quarterback, the bet's dead. But over under, so you got you say under, he's gonna so, catch less than three yes. passes. Okay. I think the question gotta be, man, what happens, right? So I watched um Take It or Leave It podcast. I don't know. Brandon Marshall's on there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Brandon Marshall from Pittsburgh, you know, Brandon yep. Marshall and Russ's boys. Yep. And yep. he and he said a lot of things that kind of enlightened me, right? I mean. Like the whole thing about about players not liking Russ, right? Uh huh. He said that uh, that's because yeah, you know Russell. Russell, he said how he says Russell's my friend, and you know Russell is different. If you yep. you know you in a locker room, guys talk about going to the club or what girls they got with and all that kind there of stuff. There you go. Yeah. Russ ain't on that man. Yeah, he ain't doing that. Russ, yeah. Russ is a man of Christ. Russ got a wife yeah. and a family. So he yeah. don't partake in that. So which may seem like he stands office in the locker room. He just don't deal in that. If it's guys that want to get a prayer group together, I bet Russ be all in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He has. Yes. Yes. And I'm paraphrasing what Brandon Marshall said, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He also said when they knock him about having his own office, Brandon Marshall, I've been around a while. He said and when Brett Favre went to the Jets, he had his own office. Sure did. He said. He Kenny did. Pickett had his own office. Sure did. Yeah, that he, that he shared. Sure with did. Yeah. Sure did. But what he was basically saying is, you know, the guys on, on football teams, and some guys just take it the wrong way. He said, but quarterbacks are different. All quarterbacks yeah. are different. The quarterback, yeah. do do they say that a, that, that, a, that a receiver or a linebacker is the face of the franchise? No. No. Your quarterback is the face of the franchise. Yeah. So they do get treated a little different. Go ahead, Shannon. I, I just wanted to say, and towards the second half of Big Ben's career, it's the exact same thing. He calmed down. He was a Christian. He didn't go out and do a lot of things uh -huh. afterwards with the guys. It wasn't that he wasn't good to them. It just they they were a different age than him. He didn't have a lot in common. Russ Wilson's going through the same thing. And he is a guy, as we know, that because of his faith and all, he, he doesn't – they said that he wasn't black enough at the end in Seattle because of the way he talks, his language and his mannerisms. And yeah. some of the younger guys, you know, couldn't relate to him. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming them. I'm not blaming him. But, you know, I was concerned about his chemistry in the locker room. But as you say, we're hearing more and more now why that was, and it makes total sense. It's hard for somebody our age to hang out with somebody in their 20s because we don't have a lot in common. <laughs> man, man, check this out. I've been married. I've been with the same woman 26 years going on 27 years. I love my wife. My wife is beautiful. But if Sierra was my life, my wife, I wouldn't care what none of them dudes was talking about. <laughs> I'm going to the crib <laughs> because every, Sierra's in the crib. Night. Man, every I'm night. like, I holler at y'all early and often. <laughs> Practice is over. Where you going? The crib? 
<laughs> I'm not going nowhere else. And I love my wife to death, but Sierra is a beautiful woman, man. What are you talking about? No, I, I'm going to go hang out with y'all knuckleheads and we're going to go to, to the strip club and all that other thing, please. To the crib. To the crib. Clean them all right day now. at work and now you go hang out with them some I'm, more. Right now, I'm Why? going to the crib. I'm not fooling with y'all. I got that at the crib. <laughs> Man, he, please. He even Brandon Marshall again gave up a little bit about there was some, and he said, he said that that like um DK Metcalf loved him, loved Russ. Yeah. He said there's talk about Marshawn lets him. Marshawn said some on somebody podcast about you know he cried to call Russ. Russ didn't answer, and Russ called him back from a private number, something like that, and it became a thing, and yeah. and Russ told uh. Told uh, Brandon Marshall that, oh man, just you know, he said in a funny way. He told me, he said, man, and it sounds right. He said Marshawn was 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 on that Hennessy, <laughs> yeah. like because that's that's, 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 that's what Marshawn do. That's facts. You know what that's I mean? Big facts. That's and big then, facts. And then, and then he said it's gonna be coming out maybe on his podcast. Russ finally opened up and talked about uh, that loss in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like that, that that was a fracture. That that a lot of them never got over that that team. Yeah. So a lot of the head button and stuff like that comes from that. But that wasn't on Russ. That was on the OC. He That's called a the terrible play. Call. Terrible the, call. The OC called the play because <laughs> because Beast Beast Mode ran it all. Way that was a terrible team. call. Exactly. <laughs> Russ ran with the OC call, I bet, bro. He I bet, I bet. I bet if it was the same situation, Arthur Smith called that. I bet Russ say I'm changing the play now. Yeah. Right, right. Now, cause he a wily old veteran. You know right, now, right, now right. Now he be like, right. man, are you crazy? We don't get this dude that ran us all the way down here. It's first and whatever at the three. Najee getting the ball. I don't care what you say. That, Russ, that's ben, what it, that, ben, Ben would have changed that call. Russ, Yo, Russ would have. <laughs> Yeah, Ben would have. Ben would have drew something in the dirt. Like, no, nah, we, sure we great, dude. Call timeout, <laughs> ran over there talking about, hey, bro, I don't care what you talking about, dude. We about hey, to Russ, run this bad, baby. Russ Obenstein, thanks for the comment, man. You know what, man? You are exactly right. Russ was Russ was raised in, a, in an educated home where his dad was a lawyer. I think his mom was like a teacher or something. I think she a was. teacher, yeah. Yeah. She so, you know, he kind of just – was brought up that way. He's only being himself, but it don't mean you not black because you talk educated or you talk like you know you're yeah. you you you're, you're intelligent. Yeah, you know but it makes I mean? it harder to relate and to, well, to to to, some, to the but, younger. Yeah, the people the way yeah. raised like that exactly. Yeah, right. But Russ Russ rushing have to dumb himself down. Them guys just need to need to get on board. That's just how exactly. he is. Exactly. You know, right. we also. Uh, you know, in 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 theory, the best way is to accept everybody where they at, right? Big facts. We big all accept facts. each other where we at. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm. I mean, I'm a I'm 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 a big mouth. Sometimes I say stuff. G been dealing with me for forty years, but Man. he knows that's how I am. He get mad at me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we get mad at each other. We do. We 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 sometimes we stay mad at each other. Be like, I ain't talking to him. <laughs> and then about <laughs> and about two weeks later, be like, man. Just let it go, man. We we done moved on, man. We we both done. We both been guilty of it. But that's how family is. That's yeah. how yeah. brothers do. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's just uh that's just when you're that familiar and you care about somebody, it happens like that. But that's so, just because that's how we were raised. Yeah. Because Kevin's mom is super intelligent, super duper intelligent. All his siblings are super intelligent. I'm I'm mm -hmm. like, all my siblings are super, super smart, you know. So I got a little, I got some intelligence about me too, man. So you know, we were raised like that. We wouldn't talk to wouldn't talk to chalk all that jive mess. Matter of fact, our parents and stuff used to get on us when we did that stuff. Yes. They'd be like, what yes. I remember Aunt Sandy reaming me one time for saying something stupid. Well, you know, well, and I was yeah. like, come on, man. You know, I would I would always say something like, I know I would say one of the things she'd always every time, still to this day, she could if I say, don't got, don't yeah. got Tear <laughs> it up. say that. What what do you what did you say? You know, right. Yeah. But y'all no, know so, my wife's super smart. She PhD. Oh, I yeah. really can't talk that mess around my wife. <laughs> you know, please. Yeah. She'll be like, what? What are you saying? Your wife you know, is come a doctor. on, man. Yeah, doctor, come on, man. Yeah, man. But back to the quarterback room. So 
Let me let me let me let, let me lay this scenario out there. Then we're gonna jump off this real quick. Uh-huh. Russ starts the season. Yeah. If Russ, if the Steelers say are seven and three after yep. ten games, yep. Do 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 Fields get any time, or do you just keep rolling with Russ? He gonna be QB time. one time. QB no. one time. No, 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 not a seven and three. No, not unless so, an injury. I, I think if there's a change, it would be earlier. Uh-huh. Let's say they're two and two, and they're not quite hitting on everything, and Fields is looking really good in practice. I could see it then, but if they're ten games in, and they're seven to three, and in a fight for contending, I don't see Tomlin making a move right there. Mm-mm. No, no change. So Tomlin, from his from his presser at the owners' meeting, he said there's a lot of meat on that on that Fields bone. He, he, he's raw. I mean, I hate to say so, that. So, 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 I guess my my, my overarching question to both y'all is: If Russ have a good season, Steelers go twelve and five, mm-hmm. win a playoff game in the wild card, make the divisional round. Mm-hmm. So, what happens next year? They both are not in the contract. What happens next year is my question. You want it me to go? On, the, yeah, go ahead, Shannon. Yeah, I, I, I roll if if Fields, you know, in his limited playing time in a series here and a. A specialty package there. If he's very, very effective, and the Steelers are twelve and five, then the rebuild is way ahead of schedule. Facts. And to me, that would mean that Fields, uh, they've seen enough of him through the season, and he is going to be twenty six, uh, a full decade younger than Rush. You're going to have to pay somebody next year, uh, and I would pay the younger player. If Fields, I'd go with Fields. If it's close at all, so so I, Shannon, I ride with that. But th- this is my my thinking. It depends on what happens in the playoffs. They get yeah. one or two playoff wins. Russ will be back, and Russ will sign a discount again because he's getting big bread from somewhere else. Not, yeah, but not, he'd not, wanted, not he'd next year. At least twenty some. But not next year. Next year. That, he's not getting paid I, nothing from Denver next year. I found that I, out. I bet you Russell. I bet you Russell take another discount. And he I, might I, take thirty, but and, he he. You know, I mean, and I it'd only for, be a one or two year deal. Yep, and I look for for Pittsburgh to sign Justin to a three year extension, and I know he'll take it because if because if Russ something happens to Russ, bro, how right? Much fit, fit, just don't want to keep keep sitting, bro. Justin will take a three year extension for how much? For how much? Sixty million. 65 million. So so they're gonna have 50 million in their quarterback position. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? That's what it that's cheap. D- d- the Dallas Cowboys owe Dak Prescott 60 million this year. <laughs> that's it one is, season. It is it's like having one quarterback if they both would agree to that. Yeah, they they go they go it depends on the success. And and Justin, Justin need listen, Justin needs Russie Tate. He needs him. I don't Shannon, disagree. Oh, I agree with that. I agree. He I needs agree. him. It can only help. Russie, Russie's going to show Justin. Knowing the history I know about Justin, when Justin left Georgia and came to Ohio State, he had to be the man right away. He had to deal with COVID and all whatever else. When he came to the NFL, he actually went backwards because he went to a trash team that had definitely, three definitely. three coaches, yeah. multiple different uh, OCs. He didn't learn anything about the NFL. Now it's like you're almost getting a rookie or a second year player that's going to be acclimated with a veteran sitting behind him. Except, it, it would have been except it would, the options coming up. Yeah, but they go they go get him they gonna get him bread, bro. To trust Justin, Justin ain't going nowhere. Justin is our quarterback. I'm let we're not gonna be looking in the draft for two, three, four seasons. It's it for all the Steeler fans that don't like it. Justin Fields is our quarterback. He's not. We're not going to go get another one. Maybe a so, late rookie round, something like that. So Big we're not G, going to get another one. Steve Steeler girl asked that question. Why would you pay Fields if you haven't seen him tried him on yet? Because you, because what Mike Tomlin said. There's a lot of meat on them bones. Mike he Tomlin. Mike Tomlin wanted to draft him when he came out. He just. Yeah, but we know we're going to see a lot of Fields this year. Yeah. I mean, it won't be as a starter, maybe. But we're still gonna see a lot of him. They're gonna yeah. find out what they got. 
I agree. Big G, I think I think I think Red's messing with you, man. Red's going in the matrix with Claude. He's gonna be spending the night. <laughs> no, hey, a lot of them uh national TV shows are saying that. Red's gonna be spending the night with that Claude. Dak headed to Pittsburgh. Yeah, said that that uh, they're not giving him an extension or something. Yeah, I know that, but that don't mean he had to Pittsburgh. I know that part no, of it. No, but I mean they're saying that that's where he would go would be Pittsburgh. I don't know where they came up with that. Yeah, put, Pittsburgh put, ain't gonna pay him no 50 million for, put, for no. <clears throat> That Gary be out of the league, but that's that's a whole nother conversation. Be, I ain't, I ain't spending no be. time about that. He gonna be a, a what? Well, I ain't listen. Let me where I'm gonna get my sign. Y'all making me spend time with Dak. I don't even spend like spending. It. Get it out there. Get him out. Don't even try to bring him up on on a Steeler centric show. Get I him agree. out. I, I agree with S. Dresden. But yeah. hey, real quick, we're gonna take one more quick break, and uh, we're gonna come back. What we're gonna do? We're gonna take about three minutes each to tell. If we were as Omar Khan or thinking like thinking for Omar Khan, what we would do next for the Steelers. The Steelers are trying to forge a new history. It's been about what? It's been about 15 years. We got a bowl, right? Yep. 2011. <clears throat> 2010. Last time, was, 10, last time we was at, yeah, 2010. Yeah, 2010. In the bowl. Long time. I mean, so after this break, we're going to come back and each give our, uh, I guess, thought. It's like it's like a it's like a, a thought game here, as far as GM thought games, what we'll call it. Because like I said, the, the Steelers are forging a new history, man. We got to start winning bowls again and being not just winning and and making the playoffs, not having a losing season. That's great. We ain't having had a losing season in twenty years. That's really right. good. Yeah. But it's time, like like G says and Coach Tomlin says, some meat on that bone. It's time to start put some meat on these playoff bones. Big facts. You know what I mean? So if, you, if you're if watching on YouTube, stay with us. We got about 15, 17 minutes left. If you listen on audio, we have to hear a few words from our partners, and we'll be right back after this. And we're back on the Pump Your Brakes podcast. And I was like, what did I do? I got hit with the algorithm. <laughs> damn, I was like, damn, I put up the algorithm side. I got hit with the stopping. Whoa. Yeah, that, that was that was that was just just because we 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 the pump your brakes podcast. I mean, I gotta slam on the brakes at least once, right? I seen it though, uh, man. I was like, it, whoa, what it, happened? Is, is, is it matrix time for Claude? Claude been in the matrix. I don't even know why you keep going over there and opening up the doors of the windows. But Leave Claude, why, why, why did Kenny went out? And that's what I was going to say. Last thing I was going to say on, on the quarterbacks. Russ's floor is higher right now, which is why he should start. He should leave the team, should play. But Justin yeah. Fields' ceiling is higher right now, where they both are right now. Yeah, facts. Big facts. And we were talking about 26-year-old Fields and 26-year-old Russ. Yep. Then we then we then Russ would be getting big money right now. Oh big yeah, bread. big bread. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so we're gonna do our GM thought exercise. Mm -hmm. So I guess what to do is in any, any, any other free agents you want to sign, mm -hmm. two draft picks, mm -hmm. and any other move you might want to see made. Like, do you want to see Roger Jones go to left tackle right now? Mm -hmm. Do you want to see Minka playing more, more ball hawking free safety? I mean, in, in, in anything you want to see different, just say what that is. So, which one of us want to go first? Let me go I'll, first. I'll wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never get to go first. You can go first. Well, I was saying I, was, I know you and Shannon are gonna be like, you go first. You go first. So, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah, man. So, I think. Omar Khan has done a, done a fabulous job, mm. right? What I don't want to do now, and I, don't, I think I don't think he will now since the moves he's made the past couple of days. I don't want to trade for Brandon Ayoub. Okay. I don't want to give up a second round pick and have to pay a guy twenty five million dollars. Mm -hmm. I much rather go to the draft, <clears throat> get my guy. So, as far as free agency. I'm going to maybe bring in 
what's his name? Donald Donald Smith. Okay. The left tackle from Tampa. Okay. Or, I like that. Or or Bar, Bar, Bartiari, the, the tackle from Green Bay. Okay. You know, give us one more year. Move Dan Dan Moore to the bench as the swing tackle. Broderick Jones will still be on the right. Mm-hmm. I'm getting, I'm getting probably get I'm getting not probably. I'm getting the receiver in the first round. Mm. Hopefully, hopefully, because you know that they need it now, man. I mean, you know, uh, and, and I, th- I think the value is bad. I can get a solid nickel corner. That's what they really need. A solid nickel corner in the third round. So mm-hmm. give me my receiver in the first. I think I'm probably looking at either Thomas from LSU mm-hmm. or Mitchell from Texas. So we need an outside guy. We got several inside guys now with Calvin Austin, with Quez Watkins. They're going to move Cordero Patterson everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and Van Jefferson, an old veteran, who's who's probably what we say position flexible, right? Yep. Um, so – I'm getting I'm getting one of those guys in the first round, a receiver. In the second round, even if I gotta move up by by putting one of my thirds out there to somebody, I gotta come up and get Zach Frazier. Yep. I need I need that center that can start day one. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as OTA start training camp start, he's the guy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get cool with with uh with uh Siamalu and James Daniels and just be a part of that line from day one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna be the guy. Somebody says stay away from Mitchell. Blue gold. Blue, Blue gold. gold says stay, stay away from Mitchell. Yeah, I'm more I'm more on, on the trench. Stay, stay away from uh, what's the other guy's name from Texas? Xavier Worthy. Worthy. Stay yeah. away from yeah. Worthy. That's what I'm staying away from. Mm-hmm. But uh, so yeah, as far as schematic changes, um, not 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 too many. You know, Big G. I like to see a lot of twelve personnel. I like mm-hmm. to see Dar- Darnell Washington get involved more on the field more. If he's on the field more, he'll be involved in the in whatever little passing game there is more, right? Oh yeah, twelve gonna be big this year. Facts. Yeah, so you know, I mean, and maybe, maybe, and maybe draft a linebacker with that other third round pick. Mm-hmm. I like Jeremiah Trotter if he falls. <clears throat> I like Colson from Michigan. Mm-hmm. I just think if you get a guy in there to learn under Landon Roberts for the next year or so. Mm-hmm. And then pair this guy with Patrick Queen in that middle set. Mm-hmm. So those are my quick, quick ideas for the Steelers, what Khan can do moving forward, what I would do. So that's it for me. Now, now which one do you guys want to go? <laughs> go ahead, Shannon. Go ahead. I'll go next. I know Big G likes to go last. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, Big facts. For me, free agency is pretty much dried up. There's these under the radar guys like Khan signed this week, Watkins. Patterson, uh, Larry, <clears throat> I'm happy with these guys, but I what they do with the rest of free agency is going to determine the draft. Uh, I wouldn't mind to see him go after Becton. Uh, the, I've, it, I've always liked him, Shane. Yeah, I and put him a cheap free agent. Yeah, and put him in right tackle and move Broderick Jones back to left, and then you don't have to worry about that tackle. You can maybe get one later in the draft. Because mm-hmm. there's some guys in the third round, even that I think could be, you know. But I'm like you, I think they're going to have to trade one of the third round guys to get up higher in the second round to get Fraser. Uh, because of the first round, it looks like one of these big time guys is going to fall. Mm-hmm. So you either trade back. Now, if somebody comes and says, Hey, we, if you, would you move back to 24, 27? I think you got to consider it. And where you can still get uh, Jackson Powers Johnson or Fraser, mm-hmm. uh, if well, not, well, 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 Shannon, in your scenario right there, <laughs> so you trade back to twenty seven, and Jackson Powers Johnson is going right. Somebody between that twenty and twenty seven taken. Yeah. Then do you potentially trade back again, and then get Fraser like early thirties? I I'd be scared to to mess with it. Okay. Yeah, I, because if you don't get Powers Johnson. You better get Jack uh, Frazier. The only other guy uh, that I would feel comfortable with is Cedric Van Braun. So you want one of them three dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, if You know, as a plug-and-play guy this year. Mm-hmm. Now, there's some other guys, but it might take half the season to, to get them up. BB, 
uh, you know, Barton's going to be a first round guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a few guys, but um, if a guy like Mitchell somehow falls to 20, I mean, that would be hard to pass up. Uh, you got Wiggins. There's some corners there that's going to fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many receivers. You could actually wait to the second and maybe get Keon Coleman, um, Malachi Corley. Um, there's, um, oh gosh, uh, who's the kid from Florida? Um, Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall. Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall. Uh, Lad Mc, uh, McCarthy. McCarthy. Lad, he's a beast from Georgia. That's he's what a I'm beast. saying, man. There's, this is such a deep group. Uh, but you know, you got to get a center. You got to get a receiver and a cornerback, especially a slot guy or a guy like uh, Melvin we've talked about. Uh, mm. Milton, uh, the corner from Rutgers. There's just oh, so yeah. many guys right there that they could really help and can play immediately. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, so. I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. Any, any, any schematic changes you want to see, Shannon? Well, obviously, move. I, I think Roger Jones needs to be back on the left side. Okay. Uh, you know, so, uh, and we got to change the center position. Uh, and I think they've addressed a lot of other uh, other positions, uh, you know, besides getting a real upgrade on the defensive line. So, as of right now, that's it. Yeah. Big G, Afton say Rome. What what, what, what you got to do to get Rome Oduzier? Go in the top 10. You got to move on. You got to go in the top 10. That's the only way you're going to get Rome. That's the, he's not going to be there. He's not going to be there past 10. He's gone. The Jets won't pass on him. There's no way. They'll, they'll pair him with Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams See, and say, now, stop now, now I've heard today the Jets need to be smart and not try stop getting eye candy and get them get them a, a line because both the linemen they got are old linemen. They're often they either, injured. They either going to draft Blake Bowers or they're going to draft oh, Rome. Rome. Blake Bowers or Rome. But but I don't care because Aaron Rodgers washed anyway. So so I'm talking about the Steelers, man. Go All ahead, right, so, BG. Give us give us give give us your, your thought exercise in in general management. Well, I'm just going. I just want the live chat to know something, and you know the guys I do the podcast with. Remember, I we said Patrick Queen, and I said an ideal situation. Where are you at? Remember, I said Justin Fields, an ideal situation. Where are you at? Remember, Tate Boy Fresh said Russell Wilson, an ideal situation. Where are you at? So we think like the con man. The con man think like us. It, we all, these are moves that we said. There's certain guys that fit the criteria. Remember Shannon said we got to do everything we got to do to build up this 53-man roster? That's what we're doing, right? So we we on the same page with him. Now, this is the deal. So wait, so Big G, mm-hmm. you saying everybody get, get their best information from the Pump Your Breaks podcast? Maybe something sort of like that, bro. <laughs> maybe something sort of like that, right? It's maybe something sort of like that. But it it ain't by accident that a lot of G Stradama stuff go down. That ain't by accident. They're you always know? listening. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so so this this the deal. This the deal. Khan did an outstanding job with last year's last year's draft. This year, he's got to take a Detroit Lions approach in the draft. Khan has got to set his board with Mike Tomlin and say, this is what we're going to do. And we're not deviating away from it regardless I meant, of who's I meant, there I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, bitch. I meant to say that, man. I meant to tee you mm-hmm. up. What what kind of uh what, what 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 kind of chicken you eat, man? Popeyes, KFC, churches. What's your churches, favorite? Big churches. 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 Well, I say that because you told me the other day, must have been Monday. Mm-hmm. You told me we we two pieces away. You said we just need a two piece. We need a two piece. We so we're not talking piece. chicken, but tell us the two pieces that we need, Big G. The two pieces, the offensive line. The two pieces, the offensive line. We have two pieces that we need in the offensive line. We need another wide receiver. That's true. But the depth in this wide receiver class is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So we can get a number two guy easily anywhere. And that's why he has to set the board and stick with the board. Based on his evaluation of the things that I'm hearing concerning the center, I don't think they're actually interested in Jackson Powers Johnson, but I think they're extremely inter- interested in both Zach Frazier, BB, and Van Pran. So that's in my mind, that's saying, okay, 
second round and down. That's where you're going to get one of those guys. So the question is, what do you do with the first round pick? And that's why you got to identify who the guy you want and go get him. Whoever it is, I don't care if you identify, okay, I want a wide receiver. You identify the guy you got and go get him. If you identify you want an offensive tackle, I'm very high on offensive tackle from Oregon State. I think uh, Fua, how you oh, say his name? Fiago. Yeah, guys. If Fiago please. falls past 12, mm. trade up to go get him. Because that that guy's going to come in and start day one, and he's nasty. He's going to start please. at right tackle, and he's going to be nasty. And you're not going to have to worry about all of this mess. So you got to take a Detroit Lions approach to the draft as a GM and say, I, this is my board, and I don't care. Yep. I know what positions are need. So the two-piece is the two offensive linemen. Now, from a depth standpoint, depending on which way you trade, because I'm saying it and I'm putting it on record, there's no way we're staying at 20. We're either going up or we're going back. We're, there's no way. That's too hot ticket of an item, especially when you see certain players fall. Quarterbacks are going to fall. A couple of them offensive line is going to fall. Maybe that maybe not one we want. Defensive line, defensive players are going to fall like crazy because it's going to be so offensive heavy with the first 12 to 15 picks. So either we trade up or we trade back. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you stick to your guns with your draft board. I think that Omar Khan and the Pittsburgh Steeler Brass, along with Coach Tomlin, have an opportunity. With these picks that we have remaining to complete the 53 man roster. But I got a free agent that I want. If they make a decision that they are going to go with a guy like BB, I want the center Williams from Miami first. I want a proven starter first. Bring BB along slowly if they make that decision. I would prefer Zach Frazier. I would, I would prefer him. But if they make the decision, that they're going to go with a guy later on in the draft at the center position. Don't use that draft capital unless you go get a proven starter who can start at center. So I like Williams, the, the guy from Miami. Even though he's had injury issues, I like oh, him. Yeah, yeah but, but he's – with his knee injury, he's probably going to miss the beginning of the season. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So you got to do something with the with, with that position. But you have to solidify – the only, the only really positions is left with the two pieces, the two offensive linemen, a wide receiver, and we need another. And it depends on what's going to go on with Rush and Baby Boy from Purdue. If those two kids are ready to go, then maybe you need one more DB, but you might have all the pieces you need. And well, I, think got, we, I think we're close to contention. They got, they got, they got hopes for Corey Trice, mm -hmm. Darius Rush, mm -hmm. another guy. Luke Barku. Mm -hmm. Yep. And baby boy from Purdue. I said Corey That's Trice. Trice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey yeah. Trice. Yeah. yeah. So they got uh young, young, all young, all under well, what? Trice was a rookie last year, but I think he's like 23. Yeah. Rush was was also a rookie. He was a rookie. Yeah. He's young. Yeah. And Luke Barku played for Jacksonville for like a year, then he went to the UFL and then Steelers brought him back on the future. He's 26, 27. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. So they got some young pieces, man. I think they want to get the camp and sort it out. So I'm not – unless they can get somebody like Mitchell or, yeah. or Terion Arnold, uh -huh. then I think they get cornered at, at, in, the, in that first round. It was one of those guys. Mm -hmm. If it's not, then they jump on and I think they go. Because I feel like they feel like they can, they can deal with Dan Moore for one more year if they draft in the corner. Yes, yeah, those the guys oh, they no. want are going. Yeah, but they can. I can I can deal with Dan Moore, but I could leave. I can't deal with Dan Moore again. <laughs> Shannon said, "Stop it, Tate. Stop it." <laughs> I, no I can't deal with it. I can't. Hey, Shannon, you gonna be on Levi Wall like the Levi Wallace train, like I was with 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 Dan Moore if he start. You gonna be? Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm gonna say it all year. He's trash. Hey, You're gonna say bench, bench. We are a little over time, so we're gonna. Mm -hmm. Get on out of here, but I want to just thank everybody for joining us for this Wednesday night and every Wednesday, not just this Wednesday, every Wednesday, man. You know mm -hmm. how much we appreciate our live chat, man. That's why we always interacting with you guys and mm -hmm. you know putting people in the matrix and stuff like that because we love the interaction. I mean, you guys make every Wednesday night fun. 
Big facts. But yeah, so Shannon, real quick, man, what's the next article about? Uh, it'll be posted in tomorrow at 11 o'clock. It's quick observations about player evaluations. And it's a, it's a little bit tongue in cheek about how everybody I meet is a, a connoisseur of film study. They are uh, the, all the free uh, internet access to all things football has made everybody an expert. And you talk to them for five or 10 minutes and you figure out that they might be watching it, but they don't know what they're watching. So <laughs> yeah, the article's a little a bit clue. funny and it deals on the center position this year. So check that out tomorrow. Okay. And Big G, what's up? What's up for you? Man, I appreciate everybody walking with the live chat. Tate, it was lit up. Right now, we up to about 90 likes. We still, we had about 150 people watching us live. So we appreciate it, y'all. We lit up. No, it's not. It's over 200 people watching. It's 205. Oh, yeah. oh, we out there killing them. So it's lit up <laughs> like a Christmas tree, man. Make sure y'all continue to get the algorithms. Make sure you swing on on Fridays. Homies Podcast, me, Tate Boy Fresh. B Dirt will be back in the building. All the fellas going on with the shenanigans on overtime as well. Sunday with the Know It Alls podcast, which is now on Fans First Sports Network. We got a big guest coming with y'all real soon. On and I can say it, we're gonna have a starting center from LSU. LSU basketball will be on the show with either this week or next week. The starting center for LSU will be on the Know It Alls podcast on Sunday. So that's huge. So what you can check us then. You can check me and Andy P on the Level Up podcast. And me and Tate Boy Fresh on That's Rather Cavaliers, Cleveland Cavaliers podcast, all on Fans First which, Sports Network. Which the center, the center for LSU, Will Baker. Yep. He's a seven yep. footer out of Texas. Yeah, he but, can uh, Big G. Mm -hmm. I think we got to get out of here and do a Cavs podcast right now, man. Okay, let's go. All right, so we're about to transition from football to basketball. Hey, one I more thing. Go ahead, hey, Shannon. Next week. We'll probably have another new writer for Still Curtain Network come on and do a guest appearance again next week. Mm -hmm. It's a new guy. I ain't gonna say who yet. Okay. So Shannon, we not we 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 not gonna tell you what Big G was talking about at the beginning of the show. Then you gotta tell me that after the show. But we're not gonna tell you after. You're not gonna tell us. You're I'll tell about... you after the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> information for same time, man. Same time, man. Yeah. Information for information, man. Same All time. All right, everybody, go ahead and hit 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 that like, hit that like one more time. We about to get out of here in about the next ten seconds. Hit that like real fast. Thank you for joining us. Check out all the articles on the steel curtain network check out all the different shows on the steel curtain network youtube channel we appreciate you and until next wednesday for the pump your brakes cast because you'll see me and big g on friday even though i might not stay on show big g i got i got company coming yeah but uh we out peace <laughs>